Now I'm going to talk about medieval women artists. And I suppose because not everyone here has taken uh, a medieval art course or the first half of the survey, um, I should probably explain to you what I mean by medieval. Uh, medieval is the term that we use to describe art from what has been called the Middle Ages, essentially between classical antiquity and the Renaissance. And that would be approximately um, fourth century, um, I think our earliest work in my medieval art class is 256 AD, so third century. Um, but uh, so third or fourth century, and then it depends on where you are. In Italy, they generally stop it with the, after the 14th century. Uh, in Northern Europe, uh, the Renaissance and the Middle Ages pretty much overlap. So uh, we can still talk about either our early Renaissance or late medieval in the 15th century uh, in Germany or the Netherlands. And uh, spate gothique, late Gothic, they'll even use uh, for uh, German art in the 16th century. Um, so essentially what we're talking about is women artists uh, from a period in Europe uh, when the dominant cultural institution was the Christian church. And of course, uh, at that time, uh, that would be what would be known as the Catholic Church today. I'm going to start off just by talking to you a little bit about um, some of the things that were said about women. Uh, this isn't directly related, perhaps, to women artists, uh, but just a little information. Um, and I'm going to start with a line from a medieval song, Ave, 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 Fitex Eva. What that means is, well, Ave is the angelic salutation from the Annunciation. It, the word just simply means hail. And uh, when the angel Gabriel came to tell Mary, uh, the mother of Jesus, that she was going to bear the Christ child, uh, the, what, he, what uh, he says is, uh, hail Mary full of grace. Actually, it's hail full of grace. Uh, thou who art full of grace. Um, Ave gratia plena. So, the little sort of uh, fun little ditty in this song is implying that the incarnation, which is the moment of the Annunciation, it's the moment uh, when Mary gives, says, behold the handmaid of the Lord, and he, she gives permission uh, for uh, Christ to enter her, uh, enter her womb. Uh, for Christians, that's the moment of when God becomes man, of the moment of the incarnation. And it's the beginning of salvation in Christian theology. So when they say Ave, 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 Fetix, Ave, it means that Ave comes from Eva, or Hail comes from Eve. In other words, um, the incarnation, uh, which is made possible by Mary being willing to be uh, this, this perfect vessel, um, that 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 the sin of Eve leads to the incarnation and the salvation of mankind. And in medieval thought, Eve and Mary were the two extreme types of women. Eve was considered to be extremely sinful. Uh, she, it's, it's her fault that mankind has suffered sin and death uh, because she was the first one to take the forbidden fruit. Uh, today, of course, uh, I think some uh, I've often thought, and I think some feminist theologians uh, will say things like, well, sure, uh, Eve, who was totally naive, like a child, she did not know good and evil. Uh, she's up against the father of lies, the devil. Uh, yeah, but she's to blame. <laughs> um, I'm speaking ironically here. Um, but that was how they thought of it. We women were inherently evil. They were considered to be more evil than men. Um, in fact, um, sometimes uh, preachers would tell uh, their husbands that they should beat their wives uh, to keep them in, in line. Uh, Mary, of course, uh, became, during the Middle Ages, and the Middle Ages are not one monolithic uh, time frame with everything's the same. Uh, there are changes that go on. Um, so by the high Middle Ages, uh, and of course this goes back, uh, it's a long history, but Mary becomes more and more important and uh, Mary becomes very much venerated uh, during the, um, the, the high Middle Ages. And she's believed to be without sin, because otherwise she could not be a perfect vessel for Christ. Um, she's the only human, human being 
uh, Christ being both God and man. So Mary is the only fully human being who is considered to be perfect without original sin. According to Christian theology, when Adam and Eve first sinned, uh, that was the original sin, and that sin was passed down, that guilt was passed down to all of their descendants, all of uh, humankind. So Mary is the one exception. She's perfect. She is a virgin, perpetually virgin, and she is a mother. And of course, there's probably not any ordinary woman who can be all those things, sinless, uh, a mother, and still a virgin. So it becomes um, an ideal that you cannot reach. Eve brought sin and death into the world. She was the first sinner. She tempted Adam with the forbidden fruit, which, uh, as I said, this seems very odd because, after all, she had no knowledge of good and evil. And it was the devil, the father of lies, who told her to take the fruit. How would she have known not to? But they didn't think that way. She did it. She's the greater sinner. And that sin of Eve passes to all her female descendants, women believed to be uh, weaker, more evil, more lustful. They needed to be subservient and they needed to be controlled by men. Mary, however, as we said, contributed to salvation by bearing the Christ child. Without Mary, there was no incarnation. There was no salvation. But Mary is unique. There's no woman who can be perfect without original sin, a virgin, and a mother, and a God-bearer, a Theodicus. So uh, she's unique. Um, it would be hard to make your goal to be like Mary. They did not understand female biology. That's a very, in fact, I don't suppose people completely understand female or male biology today. Um, but there were some interesting ideas that they had about childbearing. And these go back to classical antiquity. A lot of them go back to Aristotle and places like this. But during the Middle Ages, it was believed that when a woman bore a child, the body, the matter, which was, you know, women were lower and they were, they were closer to the earth, uh, uh, that comes from the mother. But the spirit, the soul, essentially, is from the father. St. Augustine, St. Augustine of Hippo, believed that the soul entered the body in the womb later for a female child. Aristotle, he gets this from Aristotle, said it was uh, 40 days uh, for a male to develop in the womb, uh, I guess to the point of having a spirit, and 66 for the female. Gee, I look at that and say, my, uh, the women must be, uh, what, uh, more complex, <laughs> uh, more fully formed. Uh, but that isn't how they looked at it. Uh, it was evidently the weaker vessel took a lot longer to come into being. Uh, they also thought that women um, were somehow, I, I guess I would put it as mutant men. They, were, they didn't evolve correctly and that they were inferior. Uh, you know, the ideal was the male and they evolved some other way and, and became female. Now, a couple of other things that I thought was interesting is uh, the idea that uh, menstrual blood was somehow destructive, dangerous, and there were uh, prohibitions uh, uh, based on that. Uh, but another idea that's really interesting and does appear in art sometimes, in a sense, is the idea that mother's milk or breast milk, uh, what, it, what they believed it was, was transmuted blood. I mean, these were both fluids in the body, so where does this milk come from? It must be transmuted blood. Now, when you put this in the context of Mary nursing the Christ child, or Mary's milk, uh, you, all, you get some really interesting ideas about uh, parallels with uh, the Eucharist, uh, the, uh, the bread and wine of the communion service uh, that was tr transformed into the body and blood and of Christ. Uh, so this, this is an interesting idea uh, that uh, sometimes has some interesting implications as far as artwork goes, uh, although we're not going to really see that in this class.